Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. About two weeks ago, maybe three, I did a poll on the YouTube channel as to what your favorite what your favorite video player was. And most of you responded VLC. The second one that came in was um, MPV. I'm going to do a video today discussing those two video players and two more. First one we're going to look at is Dragon Player. Dragon Player is made by KDE. It's in their KDE suite of tools uh, that pretty much so comes in your plasma desktop environment or your KDE version desktop environment. So uh, if you are in one of those distributions that is KDE or plasma based and it's got the discovery, you know, app store in there and any KDE apps installed, chances are it's got this one installed. So. Um, there's another one that they make that we'll take a look at that is going to be the second video that we look at uh, But this one first the dragon player its features are it has auto playlist with you can do default thumbnails as well as compact thumbnails for it as well also it's got a as with a lot of KDE applications a lot of configurable keyboard shortcuts other features are it plays online videos through the YouTube downloaders forward slash or slash YouTube um, DLP uh, it's auto skips, you know, chapters containing certain words. So uh, you can configure that. Also, if it's got certain words in the chapter, it'll just auto skip it. You can assign actions to the mouse buttons for left, middle, right, single, and double clicks, as well as scroll up and down. You can do quick jump to the next chapter by the middle click on the progress bar. And you can hide the menu bar and the toolbar as well. Uh, through shortcuts. So let's go ahead and take a look at Dragon Player. Let's see here. What I want to do is I'm going to right click on this B roll. I'm going to open with uh, Dragon Player. And here is Dragon Player, what it looks like. As you can see, this is a B roll of me just goofing around. Um, right click on it, you can pause. You can also exit full screen. Or go to full screen like with full screen you get your drop down menus that you know your play menus that disappear uh if you go here on the right hand side you click on play media that's where you can download or open up you know different files or whichever if you close on that goes away uh this is your play button which you could use pause or p to you know whatever your uh left and right mouse buttons will seek through the timeline or uh, not mouse buttons uh, uh arrow buttons We'll seek through through your timeline, video timeline. And then of course your volume over here uh, is clicked on and you can, it's a little slider that hides and goes away as you can see. So, and also at the bottom you can mute it. So, and there, I mean, there's no sound because when I was doing this B-roll, I was listening to music. So, but in the minute you move your mouse, you pop out of the full screen and it goes back away. So uh, that is a quick look at the Dragon Player. Next one that we're going to look at is going to be Harana or Haruna. Uh, I don't know how you, how you want to call it or how it's pronounced, but um, I've recently used it in the last nine months or so, and it's pretty doggone cool uh, in that, like I said, you could stream from like YouTube or whatever from it as well, like you could Dragon Player. Uh, it's made by KDE as well. Um, it has a lot of the same features as Dragon Player. Uh, in fact, a lot of them. Only this one is, I believe, uh, wait, no, you, you can do it via, yeah, I think you can do it via Snapped as well as Flatpak. I know that it is available in Flatpak because on my machine, I have to do flat pack because it's not in the uh fedora repositories so let's go ahead and take a look at that but first before we do that let's go here i'm going to open up my youtube page we're going to go to one of my videos here i'm going to click on it and then i'm going to share it because i want to copy the link so let's copy that link so we're going to go ahead and close out of that and then what we're going to do is i'm going to open up Piranha. We're going to click open URL. It's already there. So we're going to click open and then we're going to go to full 
you know, it's going to take it a while because once again, it's download or it's going hey, connecting to How the. How you guys doing? Welcome back to the channel. YouTube, and it's going to stream from YouTube live. So uh, this is buffering that it does. That I'm sure if I were to pause it, give it time to buffer or catch up, it would be fine. I don't know why it's buggy like that, but. Every video that I've done from YouTube has been First buggy off, like that. I would like to say thank you to Where all of you guys who does that put it subscribe. To it does it like in the beginning like, for a few seconds. All of a sudden, that notification like it bell, like catches up. Uh, so it's it buffers yeah. for a few minutes when you first start. You guys know, and then it drop speeds up pretty good. So uh, we're up to so there's there's that which is and uh, of course awesome, you know you've got the bottom of, of it of in months, the window so so i really appreciate you you've guys got your humble. timeline and all that good uh, stuff today, which you can use your keyboard shortcuts when it's in full screen uh to fast forward day to rewind the channel we're gonna you know volume up volume down all that good stuff arch based distribution arch done you know through through shortcuts as well so so you can do that so anyhow there is a quick look at haruna Next is VLC. Now, this one is the granddaddy of all of them. This one has been around for a very, very long time. It is singularly the most powerful video player in Linux. It's cross-platform. It's available on Windows, Linux, Mac. It's even available on Android. So uh, you can go down on, on Android and download it as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So now we're going to open this up full screen. And now when we're looking at it, so this is basically when you open up VLC on its own, this is what you get, you know, uh, the iconic traffic cone. So you have a toolbar at the top and then you have your timeline at the bottom. With your volume now at the toolbar at the top under each different one you can do lots of things like the media like the media portion which is what we're kind of interested in it, you can open different files multiple files you can even open up a whole damn directory and do an auto playlist with it it'll even open and playback discs and dvd you can stream through the network uh you can actually play music through it because it also doubles as a music player as well because it plays every format of media out there it's a multimedia player. You can stream through through the internet to like your own radio station out there for you to do. Uh, you could also, like right here is where you stream at. You can open a network stream for like IPTV with the open network stream. Uh, but down here at the bottom is what I was talking about where you can stream music and stuff like your own radio station that's constantly going for any music that you have, you know, on your computer stored. For the network like for using it for iptv uh you have to use the m3u 8u protocol which your uh provider your iptv provider should be able to, to give you that if you have subscription with them um you could actually open a capture device like a a, a, a webcam or you know an ip cam say it's in new york whatever you happen to have the ip address for whatever you know, there are places you can go to to look for IP cameras online that are available for you to watch. You just type in that address and boom, it'll open that, you know, through your network stream. So, I mean, and it'll even open up a webcam on your TV or, I mean, on your computer too. So, I mean, it is amazing what this thing can do. Uh, you can go to your here, here. So, you go to tools, you go to preferences in it. And then this is where you can adjust and customize pretty much everything that you need or want to with it. Like you can do the look and feel, you can do the audio, you can do the video, you can do subtitles, input codecs, and you can do hotkeys. Um, if you go to the interface, and I think you do all of them, this takes you to the advanced part which will, you can do codecs, you can set up different streams, you can do different outputs, demonsters, all, all kinds of all kinds of stuff i mean this is where you would set it up in here for your uh like your network streaming or whichever you or you know like your m3 u 8u format for your iptv this is where you would go in and put all that stuff in um there's lots of tutorials online if you're interested in that that you can look up um to teach you exactly how to do that so anyhow 
Uh, you could also change, did it, you can skin it, you can download different themes for it, all kinds of stuff. So that is a look at VLC. Well, you want to play video, we'll open a file. We'll go down here, we're going to do B-roll, we're going to click open, and we'll go to full screen. And here you have it. You know, fast forward with your shortcuts, you know, volume up and down for up and down um, with your up and down arrows uh, and your left and right arrows go back and forward. So, I mean, it's got your typical keyboard shortcuts. Also, you can go into the settings and set them to whatever you want. It's very, very, very customizable. And that, my friends, is a look at VLC. The next one is MPV. Now, what is interesting about MPV is it is almost as powerful as VLC. The exception being that it does not let you live stream. It does not let you do capturing webcams or capture devices. It does, and it does not um, let you uh, convert. I forgot to mention that about VLC. VLC lets you actually convert a video. You can use it as a video converter. So you can convert it to different formats. This is the second most powerful player out there. And it's simply because of this part right here. If you look under the overview here at the mpv.io, which is the address HTTPS, um, you will see that it's got scripting available, if you see right here. And for scripting, let's go to their GitLab and open it up. This is the MPV player, MPV GitLab page or github page sorry excuse me github page these are the different user scripts that are that they have available there's some in java that do a ton of mpv dnla so you could hook it up to like your xbox you know i mean you stream it over network subtitles web torrents i mean um all kinds of stuff and in lua script they have some that are written in lua which you know, have eight compressors, you know, audio file keys, auto crop, all kinds of stuff. And there's tons in, written in Lua in it. It's just amazing. There's so much you can do with this stuff. I mean, it's crazy. Like you can make it do like on top of Windows. So like it's like a, like you can minimize it and put it on top of Windows. So it's like a, like a picture in picture. It's crazy. Um, also, they have some other scripts down at the bottom that are pretty pretty cool too they're like for shaders for like um for anime uh luma sharp and hook you know they're downscaling also the Nvi they also fix it for nvidia i believe they have one for nvidia here yeah nvidia image scaling so i mean there, there's f you can do the f fidelity fx fsr for sharp super resolution so you can increase your resolutions i mean they got vapor synth scripts as well c plugin scripts and other scripts that they have listed here. So, I mean, there's a ton of customization that can be done through scripting in MP, MPV, which is amazing that it can do that. Uh, that by far makes it j almost as powerful as uh, video land client or VLC. Also, it's got on-screen controller. It's got GPU, video decoding, high quality video output, and um, it's embeddable and it's under active development always, you know. And so the thing about MPV is, is it doesn't really have a front end. Ones that are based on MPV that do have the front ends are like your celluloid. There's there's lots of other ones out there that have front ends for it. You can pretty much so Google, you know, MPV players with GUI and you'll come up with a plethora of them. Uh, a lot of them are built off it because of how powerful it is. It plays every format available out there as well. So, I mean, it's not, it's not, it's like VLC in that aspect. It's not one that you are not going to have a hard time playing videos with. This is like the one, this is my go-to actually. This is the one that I use. So let's open up this B-roll with um, MPV. This is my go-to player, honest to God. I've been using it ever since it came out i've been in love with it ever since it's so simple it's so basic it's great i i enjoy it a lot of like i believe hypnotics which is an iptv application and, and free tv player that was created by linux mint um they actually their back end is the mpv player they use mpv player for it so that's kind of cool to know but uh, this is the pseudo 
uh, GUI that it comes up with is right here, where you got your pause and your fast forward, your timeline, then you've got your audio. You can take away audio tracks or add audio tracks, also video tracks. You got your mute and your volume up and down function, um, which is done by your uh, arrow keys. <laughs> Let me see here. Let me open this back up with MPV. I hit exit. Sorry. <laughs> My bad. Uh, so anyhow, you volume up and down with it that way. And also you can do full screen or non full screen through it right by clicking on it right there. So, I mean, it's very basic as far as controls are concerned, but that's not where the, that's not where the crux of it lies. Actually, the crux of it lies. Let's go ahead and quit that. And then let's go ahead and quit this and let's open up a terminal and let's type in man. And PV, oh, not POV, but PV. This is where the crux lies because it is designed to be open to do different, like you got the standard keyboard shortcuts through there, right? But there's different things in different ways that you can manipulate it to do different files and to do different protocols and uh, to open up things through the through through um, multiple files through it by adding flags. Like here, MPB A file one MPB dash dash B C. So it'll open one, then go into the next, and go into the next, and go into the next. So I mean, this is pretty cool the the flexibility that it has. So what I would do if you've not used MPB before and you're interested in using MPB based on this video, I would strongly suggest that you download it from your repositories because it's on almost every repository out there install it and go to the man page read up on it and play with it play play with it i mean it's it's fantastic my two that i definitely would suggest are definitely mpv player and vlc interchangeably one and two however you want to look at it if any of the video players that i have gone over on this video are ones that you use and you think there's some other information that should be shared amongst the masses, please don't forget, you can always leave a comment down below about what it is that, that should be shared. If there's questions you have about any of them, you can also comment down below as well. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and share. You guys keep on doing what you guys do, and y'all keep on Linux and have a great day.